Before I get this video started, I'm just going to say that there's spoilers. Hello everyone, I'm Pacific the Casual Gamer and welcome back to another video. In this video, I would like to kind of review the single player for Battlefield 5 that it came with. Not the extra war story that's coming out December 4th, but the main set of three missions and the weird introduction mission. I have to say, I hate this campaign. It sucks. All of it. Well, most of it sucks really bad. Now let me explain. This is a battlefield game, so you would expect that there would be a lot of battlefields, right? But no, they decided of, if you get rid of the, like, starter mission, the nine main missions in the game, four of them are stealth missions, and I would say roughly, like, six to seven of them only really include two people. Six of them, actually, just include two people at once. It's really, really weird. And then there's like a couple missions where you hold out stuff. And then there's some actual battlefield missions, which those were the fun missions. Um, so, the campaign. The gameplay of it, I would say for a battlefield game, is perfectly fine. Um, you don't carry a lot of ammo, so you're swapping weapons all the time, you're trying it out. And the game definitely gives you options when you're playing. Instead of um, letting you pick your gear like it did in Battlefield 4, um, it's kind of like Battlefield 1 where, you know, you have your weapons and then you run around the map scavenging for other weapons, which I actually personally like. I like that more for some reason. I think it's because I played a lot of Halo, and Halo was all about, you know, just picking up weapons and using whatever. So I have an like, appreciation for that type of gameplay in just video games. So I like that kind of gameplay where you're just running around picking up different weapons and using them. Um, and it's nice because you, you can't carry a lot of ammo. This is, the, this is a kind of strange design choice. You can't carry a lot of ammo, but every enemy you kill, you can grab some ammo. So it's a give and take. Personally, the way that it works, I think it works just fine. I like it. But um, what's very strange is there's not really, at least from what I played, there's no vehicle segments, except um, you get to drive around some cars sometimes. There's no tanks or airplanes, so I'm guessing they're adding that in later. I don't know, but there's no real tanks or airplanes, and it's kind of strange because there's heavy stealth, no vehicles. And, um, the, the actual AI, I heard that the AI sucks. If you put it on hardcore, the AI is insanely good. Like, a, such a good AI for hardcore mode, but... That's kind of where the positives end. I mean, I guess the, the map is kind of open world-ish when you play. I mean, it's still linear levels, but the maps are a bit bigger and more open. But other than that, the actual storytelling really sucked in this game. Like, the first set of missions, you play as like a convict and you're an explosives guy and they send you out to blow up some planes, right? Fair enough. But you only do it with one guy the entire game. There's an extra guy with you. And he really doesn't do anything except for the last of the three missions. And they never revisit the fact that you're a convict. Like, they're always like, oh, you robbed a bank and this and that and the other. But it never went to you trying to rob the bank or it never went back to that after the campaign. It was just a typical, you and me are buddy-buddy and we're going to save the day. That's all you really did. It was really strange. Like, I kind of wish in that campaign, the first one, that um, you would go to just, I don't know, actually go to the spot where you robbed the bank. The second campaign, which is the one that they heavily, heavily advertised, the one in Norway, as a stealth mission, this one made a lot more sense, actually, because you were nighttime, you were skiing, you were kind of like special ops, even though you weren't, and the ski mechanic was really nice, actually. Like, as stealth missions, uh... The second set in Norway was the only one that made sense for stealth missions, but still, Battlefield is not meant for stealth, and it just, the stealth mechanics in Battlefield suck because they're really easy to exploit and stuff like that. And the storytelling was a bit better, I would say, for this campaign. Um, kind of went a little more in-depth, and you kind of got to see your character a little more. She was supposed to be this kind of B.A. can kill anyone she wants type character. And you saw that a little more. I would say not enough. Because, you know, she used, like, throwing knives and you stab people and you just use whatever guns you could and all this stuff. And, I mean, it was good, except it wasn't 
great. Like, a perfect example of this, uh, if you think about, is the campaign level in Battlefield 1, the Australian one, where you uh, were like this guy and you were saving the little kid all the time. You really felt like you were like saving this kid all the time, I feel like. Or the one where you were the Italian brother, right? Just, it just was, the relationship didn't work. The last one was probably the best built campaign and the best by far in storytelling. This one, I really felt like, I'm like, okay, finally I get to the good part of the campaign. This one you're playing um, as an, a guy who's part of an infantry corps from Africa um, so it was like an all-black infantry corps sent from Africa to fight for France, right? So you're fighting for France, and the entire time it's got racist undertones, which made sense for the time. So, I mean, I thought it was like, okay, they're going to tell the story of you, you know, doing stuff and racism and all that. And they, they hit some racism notes, but they didn't actually make it seem that bad. Like, the whole thing, the whole premise of this thing, and this was also where there wasn't really stealth missions, it was constant fighting, which was great, and it had, like, a moral to the story, because it's like, every time I destroy a flat gun, I save lives, or some, something like that. You're like, okay, you know, it's got some anti-war stigma. It actually, like, you could, the person felt very personal. His name was Deem. He, he felt super personal, and then he was like, um, you know, the, the group was under-equipped, and so you had to scavenge, and so that made sense with scavenging mechanics type in the game. And, you know, there was a little bit of racist undertones where they got erased from a picture because they captured a fort, but then they got erased from history and all this stuff. But they didn't make it, like... There was all these undertones, yet the actual, like, um, interactions you saw between the French soldiers who were white and the French soldiers who were black didn't really happen. There was like one scene and that was it. And the rest just nothing happened where it was like there was no real visual racism actually happening. It was all uh, stuff that just was undertones and you kind of knew. Anyways, but it was told from the perspective of like the dude was old telling the story. So every once in a while you'd be fighting and then the guy's telling the story. It was great storytelling, the last mission. But it missed the racial undertones that they were trying to go for with this mission. And it was clear, it was very clear that they were going for it. And they didn't do it as much. I feel like these stories, the three of them, for what they were trying to do, three minute missions, if you get rid of all the deaths I had and all the stupid mishaps, like an hour and a half per story, okay? You can't tell the stories enough. Like the bank robber, why not have him robbing a bank? Why not? show the story of first him trying to rob the bank and then blowing up planes and then what happens after that mission when they get rescued or the Swedish gal, gal why not part of her training you know showing part of her growing up or the guy from Africa maybe show more missions where people are racist to you or something like that would have done much better and I, I just feel like war stories in the bite sizes they are they are too small to hit on, like, like what they should have done to the story. And this is where I think, if I was the devs, right, if I could tell the devs to do something, I would say postpone the last Tiger or whatever, the Panzer mission where you're the German guy, and add, literally, add more missions to these stories to make the characters more, I don't even want to say likable, more character. There's, like, lack of character in this story. So, that's it. And that's what I have to think. The single player, don't get this game if you just want the single player. The character, storytelling, is pretty bad in this game. Um, they missed the mark. I hope they do better. But anyways, guys, I would love to know your thoughts in the comments below. Have you played Battlefield 5 single player? Do you like it? I, don't know. I mean, I don't. But I'm Pacific the Casual Gamer. I suck just as bad as you do at video games. And I will see you in the next episode, stream, vlog, or Steam a post of whatever I decide to make.